And especially today, we ask not to lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lord, we depend and we submit ourselves to you. And you know you are the leader of our life. You can do whatever you, you want with, with us. We are only instruments to, to preach the good news. We are instruments to glorify your glorified name. Lord, we need your help. We need your healing and your blessings upon the whole world. And we ask you, Lord, to heal all those affected by infected by the coronavirus. And we ask you, Lord, to bless the soul of those who passed away because of th this pandemic. And we implore you, Lord, to hear us when we cry out and say, Abun Bashmayu, Let Qadash Shmoch, Tifem El Kutoch, Nehwes Dionoch, Eikan Bashmayu Baro, Hablan Ahmad Sultanan Yaumun, Wash Bukhan Hawain Wahtuain, Eikan Dof Hnan Shbakin Hayuain, Lot Alan Nesuno El Fasola Mimbisho, May I told you of him also? I look back to all of all mean. Okay, dear friends, happy to be with you also today. Uh, as I told you uh, during my Bible study, I'm going to finish with you the letter uh, of St. James. We started with uh, the first uh, study, it was pain and problems uh, are an opportunity for joy. And now we are going to, to talk about dealing with temptation. And we will have, if you want me to continue or we can change the subject if you like, we have another uh, uh, four studies. So today we are going to read mainly from uh, James chapter 1, verses uh, 13 to 18. And from chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I need a volunteer to read uh, for me uh, chapter 1, 13 and 18, please. Okay. What is it again? Sorry. Chapter 1, James chapter 1, verses 13 to 18. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, <clears throat> for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor de does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And, and uh, chapter four, verses seven and eight, please. Therefore, oh, oh, okay. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go, go. Oh. go ahead. Chapter four, seven through eight? Seven and eight, yes. Seven and eight, okay. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Thank you. Taudi. By the way, wash your hands. It's important these days, huh? We have to wash uh, our hands uh, always and use sanitizers and everything. So thank you for attending. Uh, uh, you know, here, when we start uh, with the, uh, chapter uh, 1, 13, and 18, we discover that if we go, you know, we have to notice something that the uh, New Testament is written in which language, you know? I need your help. In Syriac or in Greek, the New Testament? In, in Greek one. In Rani, Greek. Greek. So, thank you very much. So, uh, because it is written in Greek, we have to notice something very important. If you go to uh, one three, knowing that the testing, hmm? and you go to 113, let no one say when he is tempted. <laughs> testing and tempted, yani, uh, the verse, the third verse and the verse, verse 13, if we go to, to uh, the original language, we can uh, discover that uh, the original language is using the same term or the same word to talk about testing and about uh, temptation. Uh, why? 
and how can we know the exact uh, meaning? The commentator of the uh, uh, Bible says, the context will determine which sense is meant and how it should be translated. So uh, verse three and verse 13, they are using the same word in Greek to, to talk about testing and about temptation. As I told you, uh, from the context, we can understand exactly what uh, the writer means in verse three and verse uh, 13. Of course, two, two weeks ago, we studied the uh, verse three and we, we clearly in James 1, 3, the author here is St. James is referring to test of faith by the trial of life. But in James 1.13, he is speaking about uh, seductions to evil, being tempted by evil. Here, of course, you may ask, why did James or St. James, of course, connect the two, temptation, and testing, testing and temptation. What is the relationship between testing from without or from, uh, from outside and temptations from within or from, from our inner side? The, the, the answer is too simple, too easy. If we are not careful, if we are not careful, the testing on the outside may become temptations on the inside. This is very important. Please, you have to uh, memorize it. If we are, because trials, trials will come, whatever we do, it will come. So if we are not careful, the testing on the outside may become temptation on the inside. When our, of course, I will explain it more and more. When our circumstances are difficult, and we, all of us, we, we face difficulties like today's. We are in prison. All of us, we are suffering from coronavirus. And, and I'm sure if not all of us, many of us, they are asking uh, uh, our lovely Lord, why? Why are you doing so and so? So when our circumstances are difficult, we may find ourselves complaining about God, questioning his love resisting his will. And of course here, another, I will call it friend, but he's not a friend. Another one, he will interfere. Satan, when we are complaining about God and why he's doing so and so and so and so, Satan will provide us with an opportunity to escape the difficulty. This opportunity is a temptation. This opportunity is a temptation. An example of this that we are all aware of, not all because we don't have many married people here, but especially the married people, a very important example here is marit marital infidelity. If our marriage has problems because of various issues, and by the way, for those who are married, problems will come between uh, uh, the husband and, and the wives. There is no couple without uh, uh, problems and issues. So the problems, if our marriage has problems because of various issues that we are not probably dealing with, we may be tempted to hook up, God forbidden, with another person. St. James made the point that the natural thing to do is to deny personal responsibility when we have a problem or when we are committing any sin, not me. We deny our responsibility immediately and we start doing what? We start blaming our spouse or the other person. Or even say, why did God make me like this, prone to temptations? Or we may say, the devil made me do, uh, do it. Always we put it or we blame another person. All of these are attempts to redirect responsibility, just as the human race 
has been doing from the beginning. I'm sure it, it's coming to your mind, Adam. Adam in Genesis 3.12, when God asked him if he had disobeyed and eaten from the fruit, what he said, he told him, Lord, not me, the woman. The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Not me, Lord, not me. And we, we all of us, we do it. Yani, if, if somebody of you uh, is blamed by, by mommy or dad, you know, no, not me, is, is my, my brother, not me, not me. Always we try to blame or put it on the shoulder of, of uh, another person. Uh, Harun, I don't know how you pronounce it in English, Aaron, Aaron, the brother of Moses in Exodus 32, 24. When, do you remember when, when Moses went to receive uh, the commandments and he came back, he saw the calf, uh, the, the people of God at that time, the, the Jews, they did a calf to, to worship and to, to, uh, 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 to pray uh, for. Uh, Moses, he was asking, he was asking Harun, telling him, what is this? What did you do? And, uh, and uh, Harun, he told him immediately, they gave it to me. They give me the gold and I cast it. I put, I, I put it in the fire and this calf came out. Not me, not me. It is them, not me. Adam blamed Eve. Harun blamed the Jewish people. And all of us, we are Adam and we are Harun and we are blaming everybody else when we commit any sin. And mostly we blame God. And all of us, we say, freely God loves us. Why he is tempting us and why he is uh, uh, letting this happen? All of us, we blame him. We don't blame ourselves. Here, especially in the first part of my Bible study today, uh, 13 to 18 here St. James established in his epistle that when we are tempted to evil we cannot blame our failure on anyone but ourselves I need you to read only verse 13 for me only verse 13 yes Frank yes. yeah I'll yes. read it Okay. Please come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, James, chapter one, verse thirteen. Oh, my bad. Okay. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He Himself tempt anyone thank you very much you're welcome so if we fall to temptations it is because of our own lust or our own desire and we especially can't blame it on god because god this is according to verse 13 because god cannot be tempted by evil and nor does he himself tempt anyone. If you go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, you will be happy a little bit. Who can read it for me? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, St. Paul, in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthian, he also makes it clear that God does not tempt anyone to evil. He even places limits upon the extent of our testing or temptations. Of course, many, many of us, they know it by, by heart because it gives us uh, comfort. I'm talking about this uh, uh, verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it gives us comfort and assurance that we can overcome the trials and temptations in life by the help of him, of whom, by the help of God. So St. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation or test 
has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, and he is always faithful, by the way, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation or the testing will also make the way of escape also that you may be able to bear it. This is really very comforting and assuring that we can overcome temptations by his help. Therefore, we can be assured that whatever test or whatever temptation that comes our way, God will enable us to endure it and to overcome it if what? If we entrust it to him because with him we can do everything. Without him we are not able to do anything. So please, next time when you are in any sort of trials or temptations, don't try to blame God. It's us. And be sure, even though he will, he will permit any trial or any temptations, but he will give us an escape. He will, give, he will help us to, to overcome it. Like in our text also, uh, from 13 to 18, we have four proofs that God is not responsible for evil. In James 1, 13, 18, the author, St. James, Mor Yaqub, gives four proofs that God does not tempt anyone to evil. In verse 13, and we just read it, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. In this verse, we learn that God cannot be tempted by evil, nor could he lead anyone to, to be astray. Do not blame God for temptation. He is too holy to be tempted, and he is too loving to tempt others. God does test us. He does not tempt us. He does test us as he did with Abraham. Do you remember what he did with Abraham in the, in the Old Testament? Somebody can uh, help me with the, with the story of Abraham in the Old Testament. It's in Genesis 20, uh, chapter 22. I don't want you to read it, but if you can help me, what happened with him? Yes, Sayyidina Fikri. Please. Uh, he tr when, when he promised him a son, and then he says, take your son and go, uh, يعني, how you call it in English? Sacrifice so, him for me. Sacrifice yeah, him for me. Exactly. So he, he tried him and, and his faith, but his faith, it says, yes, so I will. So that's why he, he you call it tempted. See, see, see here, here in, in the story of Abraham, we can really understand the verse of uh, St. Paul in 1 Corinthians. He is tempting us. He is uh, trying us. He is testing us. But he is also uh, make the way of escape. And if you remember the story of Abraham, when he tempted Abraham, he told him to to sacrifice uh, 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 his only son for the Lord, you can see that he provide a lamb and he told him, I need you to sacrifice this one, not your son. But he tested his faith. And because Abraham, he was really faithful and he, he, he didn't change his, his, uh, uh, his trust on, on, on the Almighty Lord, he, in the end, he, 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 he win. And this is it. When, when we are, and we spoke about it in my previous uh, Bible study. When we are test, tested, we are tested. God is testing us to make us stronger. But we have to be careful not to fall into temp temptations because temptations are sometimes by the devil. If we don't know how to answer temptations, will 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 in the end uh, uh, die and when, when i'm talking about death i'm talking about the spiritual death so god does test us as he did with abraham 
but he does not and cannot tempt us. It is we who turn occasions of testing into temptations. If we have to uh, uh, understand temptation, we can say a temptation is an opportunity to accomplish a good thing in a bad way. A temptation is an opportunity to accomplish a good thing in a bad way out of, uh, of the will of God. Here, let me ask you a question. Is it wrong to want to pass an examination? Is it wrong? No, of course not, of course not. But if we cheat to pass the examination, then we have sinned. So it is okay to pass an examination. There is nothing wrong here, but if we cheat, and we all do, all of us, we do it, huh? Don't tell me no. If we have the opportunity, we'll, we'll do it. So if we cheat to pass it, then we have sin. And don't tell me that this sin is a white one. Man, no white and black here. It's a black sin. The temptation to cheat is an opportunity to accomplish and listen to me here, to accomplish a good thing, which is passing the examination in a bad way by cheating. It is not wrong to eat. Of course, it's not wrong to eat. But if we consider stealing the food, you are tempting yourself. So here, it's very important and you have to understand it and be careful. In verse 14, it gives us another proof that God cannot be tempting us by evil. Verse 14 says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away. In, in, in verse 13, we said God is not, God uh, uh, cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Yani, uh, when we go to, to, to the exam and we don't know how to answer the question and we have an opportunity to, to cheat and we do it, here we are drawn away by our desires to cheat. And here it's a problem. So in verse 14, St. James says, this happens when we are drawn away. Again, I will go to the Greek language because as I told you, uh, to really understand the, the New Testament, we have to understand the Greek. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know Greek, but uh, because I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to read the uh, uh, commentary, uh, I understand something here. The Greek phrase used here drawn away means to bait a trap, to bait a trap. And of course, you know very well, no fish uh, bites any, an empty hook. No fish bites an empty hook. There is always bait that appears, there is always tom bait that appears to our inner desires. In Genesis, uh, chapter 13, verse 10, when Lot, how do you pronounce it in English, Lot? Lot? Lot. Yes. When Lot had to decide between going east to Sadum or west to Canaan, his desire for land and wealth could only see the green plains of Jordan. And I'm sure you know the, the story here that or this this choice turned out to be a fatal decision for his family he ended up in a in a land of sin and problems and and we didn't have anyone who 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 worshiped the lord and sadu and gomorrah was completely destroyed and even even his his own uh, wife was uh, turned into a, a salt uh, statue and you know you know the so here he had a trap, he had a trap loot. When he decided between going east or west, he was looking only at the nice uh, 
panorama and the nice view and he went there because he wanted only a beautiful uh, area and uh, the wealth and he ended up by 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 uh, escaping that uh, terrible city the third proof concerns the nature of desire because desire by itself is not it is not really wrong you know, all of us we, we we want to to eat all of us we want to drink all of us we and there is nothing wrong with eating drinking blah 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 but we are going to see in in James 115 desire desire is portrayed as a mother conceiving and bearing a child let me read it to you verse 15 then when desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth death and sin when it is full grown brings forth death so in james 115 desire is portrayed as a mother conceiving and bearing a child which is sin whose ultimate dis destiny is death and when i'm talking about death death means uh, separation from god and as i heard many of you uh, telling abuna andrew two days ago that death is not the end death uh, we don't we don't fear the uh, the death of our bodies we fear the spiritual uh, death because the spiritual death separate us from god so here uh, this image it's really excellent because desire is not necessarily wrong just as eating drinking even sex and money are not wrong but when lust hooks up with these sin is conceived and gives birth to evil actions that can separate us from god yani let's have a an example eating is not bad gluttony is really bad sharaha is really bad drinking and here i'm talking even about alcohol even though we don't like to talk to to drink alcohol a lot but drinking alcohol by itself it's not wrong but drunkness is bad and here when i'm talking with our youth because you know this is an ever problem between the clergy and the youth. The youth, they wanna only uh, <laughs> drink. And I really am not against, but I'm telling them, don't let anything control you. When we were created, and this is in the, in the beginning, in Genesis, we were created at the end of all creatures. And God told us, you have to submit everything to you. He was talking to the mankind. You have to control everything, not to be controlled. And the problem, we let everything else control us. This is the problem. And this is the problem with drinking with everything. Uh, sex is not bad in itself. Uh, in fact, yani, here we are participating with God in creating. Of course, we are not creating. We are only instruments. But sex in itself is not bad but adultery is bad and if you remember when when St. Paul is talking about sex he says uh, between the man the husband and wife is is sacred it's holy but outside the institution of the of of the marriage it becomes adultery and here it's bad and it's a sin we must take full responsibility because it is our lust combined with opportunity then acted upon by our will or wish which causes the problem so here as i told you we have and you have to 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 divide between we have to understand exactly the nature of desire desire by itself is not bad but when it is uh, it is combined with with lust it becomes really bad and it turned into into sin and the sin 
will 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 end up by our spiritual death. The fourth proof that God does not tempt anyone to evil is the nature of God. And here I don't want to be to be, uh, stay talking all the time. I need somebody to read for me verse 17. The nature of God. Verse 17, please. Who's reading it for me? I can read. Yes, go, John. Okay. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Thank you very much. So, God does not tempt anyone to evil because of his nature. God is perfectly righteous and just. He can have no part in sin. God is only responsible for every perfect gift and good thing that comes down from heaven. James 1.17 God here in this verse is pictured as the father of lights which come down into this dark depraved world. And in verse 18, I need somebody to read it for me. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Thank you very much. In verse 18 here, we are reminded of God's grace, which has been bestowed on us. The language here is a birth language that God brought us forth so that we might be his children. He brought us forth so that we might be his children. There is nothing in this world that is truly good that doesn't come from God. St. James is talking to believers, telling them that there is spiritual birth has come that, sorry, St. James is talking to believers, telling them that their spiritual birth has come from God and the church is the first fruits or the beginning of the future resurrection. Therefore, evil is entirely our responsibility as compared to the loving grace and mercy of God available to all who would receive it and to all who will accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and God. Do you have any question here? Because I finished my first part. Today I was talking a little bit uh, theology, but uh, personally I like uh, I like the subject. I I wish you you, you like it too. Um, we have a, a few. Um, yes. Just two of them. So one, uh, Daniel was asking regarding running away from responsibility of admitting sin. How do we grow in humility to accept the responsibility of our faults? Who who was asking this? Daniel. Daniel. Do you want me to ask it again? Uh, yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Regarding running away from responsibility of admitting sin, how do we grow in humility to accept the responsibility of our faults? No, I like it. I like this question and it's important. And today I was talking to somebody else and now we are going to answer it in the second part of, of my uh, uh, Bible study. We have to draw near to God. We have to submit ourselves to God. And we have, and, and sorry because I'm always repeating myself here and all the clergy, they are repeating themselves here because uh, to accept our responsibility and not blame anybody else, we have to grow uh, spiritually. And to grow spiritually, it's one package. It's not only, it's uh, fasting, praying, uh, uh, reading the Bible, uh, being with a good, uh, uh, with a good atmosphere, uh, a nice group, uh, not tolerating our because you know also sometimes we tolerate our sins. Yani, it's okay, it's a small one, it's a white one. It's you know, and it's not okay. This is completely wrong. We don't have to compromise sin. You cannot compromise it, or it is right or it's wrong. And with doing so, we'll grow spiritually and we'll assume the responsibility and we, we, can, we are not going to blame anybody else. Another question? 
Yes. Um, someone asked to clarify from verse 17. Um, what does the father of lights mean? <laughs> Can somebody help me? It's God. He is, he is the father of light. He gives us everything good and every every uh, every uh, gift is from him. He, you know, light and darkness. Father of light is God, the almighty God. There is no, with light, there is no darkness. So he is giving us every good things. But please help me if you can. If somebody would like to 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 uh, add something here, I will, I will love it. Yes, you're able to unmute. The balance of the verse, uh, says um, every perfect gift comes. This is verse 17. Mm. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, which with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So, shadow is, as you said, Sayyidna, shadow or darkness is of the devil. To, ex to expose the lightness of God and the goodness of God. The writer, he used the word light, which is the opposite of darkness. And, and the end of this verse is important. Uh, no variation or shadow of turning. He is faithful to his promises. Always. He is faithful. He is always faithful. Thank you, my friend. Baruch Mor Sayyidna. This is da Shamosho Daniel from California. Yes, Danny, Habibi. Um, I was just going to add to to remind them what you said earlier about uh, all the good things come from God. So there's yeah. nothing that's truly good that doesn't come from God. So the father of lights also implies this. Thank you. We can take another question and then go to my second part. And here I'll be yeah. sure. Perfect. So we have one more. It's kind of, if you can just like re-explain it. Um, Which one? So why would God allow temptations to occur for people if he knows it would not go well? Um, so, for example, like with Judas. Just re-explain a little bit. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I, I, <laughs> sure. I, I, I'm not angry, but, you know, as Abuna Andrew told you, <laughs> this, this question, we heard it one million times. But it's okay. It's okay. You are allowed, and it's a free country, and you can ask. This is, this is me. I would answer it uh, uh, as follow, but please, I need also uh, uh, somebody else to help me if if you have something to add. But to me, I told you, uh, God, as Saint Paul says, He is allowing temptation, but He will put a limit. But for example, Judas, he he fall into temptations, and God God knows it. But because I told you in previous uh, intervention, for God. There is no uh, tense, yani, no past, no present, no future. For him, 1,000 uh, years is a second on his eyes. So he knew because he is omnipotent and he knows everything and everything is, uh, is really well known to him. But he, he didn't want because he loves us, he didn't want Judas to, to fall into temptation. But Judas, he, he couldn't resist. He couldn't resist the temptation and he fall into it. And the result was uh, uh, death, you know. But God, because I told you and everybody, all those who believe, they will tell you that uh, he is faithful. He keeps his promises. So... Because he keeps his promises, he cannot cheat us. So he told, he told us, I will permit a trial to strengthen you. But because we couldn't resist it, we fall into temptations and, and uh, we ended up by, by dying spiritually. Okay, am I allowed to continue? So, uh, chapter uh, 4, verses, and here, you know, I will, I will ask somebody else to read it again because it's important to memorize uh, uh, the Bible verses. But in the first uh, uh, part, I was telling you, don't blame anybody else. Don't blame God. Don't blame uh, your wife. Don't blame your uh, partner. You have to assume the responsibility. Here, in these two verses, he's giving us 
a way of escape. How can we escape temptation? How can we escape uh, 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 trials? And, and so he says, who is, who is willing to, to read the seven and eight for me? I was uh, saying... Uh... Frank Habibi, Tfadal. Okay. Therefore... Yeah, yeah, hold on one sec. Uh, my phone. Okay. James chapter four, seven. Okay. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Oh. Cleanse your hands. Yeah. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and uh, purify your hearts, you, you double minded. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Before I tell you what my uh, more moral theology professor told me once uh, while I was studying in, in Rome, see here it's giving us some keys to resist and to overcome temptation. Submit to God. This is your will be done. And we pray it every day. Resist the devil. Because, listen, it will come. And by the way, our, uh, 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 he's not our friend, but I'm trying to, 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 to joke a little bit. Satan is, is watching us to, to, to let us uh, fall. So don't, don't compromise the sin. You have to resist him. If you remember when, when one of the disciples tells our Lord Jesus Christ to do so and so, what he told him? He told him, go away, Satan. Go away. And this is, this is very important to resist uh, uh, Satan, to resist the devil. Tell him, go away. When you are tempted, you have to resist. No, I'm not going to do it because I know the wrong and I know the bad. I, I, I know the wrong and I know the, the right things because I'm, I'm a child of God. I was, he brought me, if you remember in, in that, in, 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 in uh, where, uh, verse 18, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So we have to resist. And it is not okay. We have to draw near to God. And if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. And why he is asking us to draw near to him? Because he respects our freedom. He is there. You know it from the revelation. He is there waiting for us, knocking on the door. And he wants us to open. And here he is telling us, draw near to me. I will draw near to you. And... For him, it is not okay to be double-minded. For him, it's not okay to be double-minded because we have two, two ways, one of the devil and one of the Almighty Lord. And we cannot choose both. We cannot serve both money and God. It's a, even our spiritual life, it's a decision. Even our spiritual life, it's a decision. Let me, let me tell you what, uh, what one time, because... Uh, what my moral theology told me a uh, long time ago when I, I was a child and was, my beard was, was black, it's applicable to all of you. I once, I wrote it, I will read it for you. I once had a professor of morality who lamented the most of his students compared sin to a cliff. Compared sin to a cliff. They wanted to know and I'm sure all of us, we want, we want to know. They wanted to know how near the edge they could walk without falling off. See? Yani, uh, yani, uh, God, please, how, how, how much can I approach sin? Uh, yani, how much I can drink or how much I can commit? Yani, but I don't want to, to fall into temptation. How much they could sin without losing their soul for eternity. See, the, the, the students, they were asking uh, their moral theology professor, how much can we uh, do so and so and so, but we don't want to lose our eternal life. We don't want to, to, to fall. Here, St. James would 
consider, I'm sure many of us, including myself, we, we, we found ourselves uh, uh, with uh, like those students. St. James would consider these students as sinners with two minds, double-minded. And here I will say there are only two roads, two ways, the way of the world and that of God. And we can choose only one to attempt to go next to the edge of the cliff is to still love the world and to that degree to have rejected whom? Rejected God. God desires to be loved completely and anything short of that is spiritual adultery, believe me. So we cannot compromise any. Uh, Sayyidna, how much can I go in that bad way? You cannot. You can, there, we, we, we stated it uh, a few minutes ago. There is no uh, communion or there is no, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, darkness cannot go with, uh, with light. When the light comes, the darkness will disappear. And we are the sons of the father of lights and we have to be the lights we have to be the salt we have to be the yeah ye yes yeast yeast so if we don't do this we are really we are going to be considered as spiritual adulterer i will conclude only by telling you about the change that happened to one of the church father or one of the great figure of the Church of the West, Augustine. Augustine, if you know him, before becoming a saint in the Latin church, he was living a terrible life and he was going uh, astray in all its uh, sense. So after he believed and God changed his heart, he was walking down the street and sorry to pronounce it, but a pr prostitute called out to him. He did not uh, answer. So she knows him. She yelled out, Augustine, it is I. He answered her. He said, I know, but it is no longer I. See how beautiful this image. The prostitute told him, Augustine, it is I. He said, I know you, but I'm not longer that person. In a sense, two men live in our hearts, Adam and Jesus. And I will conclude with this. When temptation knocks at the door, somebody has to answer. Our new nature in Christ needs to be constantly fed by the word of God to be strong so that can always let Jesus, not Adam, Jesus answer that door. Temptation, it's always knocking at our door and somebody has to answer, Adam or the second Adam, Jesus Christ. So our new nature, because from the baptism, we were closed, as St. Paul says, with Jesus Christ. With He gave us, we say in, in Syriac, he gave us the robe of glory. This is a figure from St. Ephraim. So our new nature in Christ needs to be constantly fed by the word of God to be strong so that we can always let Jesus answer that door. Thank you and may the Lord bless all of you. Okay, go ahead, Salim. So uh, I just want you, Sayyidina, to comment uh, on the importance of fasting in resisting temptation. Uh, and I would also like to comment uh, on the idea of temptation per se. Uh, there is, this question always rise up like, why God allows evil? Why God allows pain? Uh, why are we tempted? Uh, there is a very important component in, in, in ethics is the word itself, like when you, the, the etymology of the word ethics, it's ethos, which means it's a habit. 
So I, I, what actually, this is part of the Catholic theology, but what they say is God allows us to go into this problems so we grew up spiritually. Because every time we are tempted, we fail, we try again to hold this cross and walk up the hill. We try to learn from our problems. And it's like anything in life. If you don't make yourself vulnerable, and if you, like when you go train, for example, and you think that you don't know, you make a lot of mistakes, but you become better. I think the most important component of it, the realization that we are growing up and realization that this is a target maybe we will not achieve. We're not, we're trying to become saints. The most important thing is this continuous try to become better. And there is also another philosopher of religion. His name is John Hick. He doesn't speak a lot about Christianity, but there's an important point he makes that if the world, there was no evil in the world, then there is no good in the world even. Like if there, that's, that's also a problem. If it's hard to say, it's, it's a very philosophical issue, but if God didn't allow the presence of any evil, then there is no meaning for the good itself. If everyone can steal without someone being hurt, there is no, no concept for heroes. There is no concept for Allah, he, he, Salim, he, Salim, I, I cannot argue it a lot, but I don't think so with all my due respect to this uh, yeah, 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 religion, please. because God has nothing wrong and has no sin and any uh, the uh, when he created us he created us to be uh, like him it's it's me and you who, who 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 change his his plan for us it's me and you who 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 disobeyed him and we fall but let me go first of all uh, yani I'm, I'm happy because you are speaking and uh, and I might ask you to conduct a Bible study for us. And maybe I will, I will ask you to do something about faith because you are, you are a physician about uh, faith and, uh, and science or where is God in, in this coronavirus. I might ask you to do it for us with, with, the, with, the, permission of, uh, with the permission of, uh, of yeah, <laughs> Netanya and Chris. I know they are watching you. But, but, uh, but fasting... Fasting, it's important here because if we agree together that God is trying us or testing us to make us stronger, also fasting will make us stronger. And I'm not going to, to answer you from, from outside the Bible. The Bible, when it speaks about devil, says this, uh, I don't know, this, uh, uh, this demon only goes out by fasting and prayer. Thank you, da da Danny. <laughs> demon, so so pray, prayer and fasting will overcome everything, temptation, because you are making... Here, we'll go to my previous uh, discussion. Here... Controlling ourselves. When we fast, we are control, controlling ourselves. And when we we succeed to control ourselves, and here uh, fasting it will it will make us stronger and and sure we are, we are going to overcome any other temptations. So as I I am telling you always, even in our spiritual life, we have to train ourselves. Like any sportive man or woman, they are always training themselves and they are playing daily to, to run uh, 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 during their uh, uh, game. And also during our spiritual life, we have to train ourselves. And we have to read the Bible, we have to fast, we have to pray, we have, we have, we have to read the church fathers, we have, we have to listen to, to, to those who are wiser wider than us and they have uh, 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 good experience spiritually to, to grow because if we don't but what I see when when somebody is 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 uh, knowing Christ uh, recently خلاص, he, he, he starts criticizing everybody else and this is wrong knowing Christ it makes me be next to everybody Knowing Christ, it makes me love everybody. Knowing Christ uh, 
make me humble to to ask people to help me you know so yeah. Yeah. Uh, for this reason thank you for your question uh, fasting it will help me certainly to overcome uh, any sort of temptation tell you Sayyidina. thank you so yes much. mary and uh, mute mary yes Sayyidina barkhmore hello mary. Uh, one of the point is when they said why god allow the temptation like when we allow our kids to fall and experience, like to grow up. But when we knew the fall is going to be very hard and they're going to get hurt, we just run away and let wow, them Mary. and stop them Thank from it. And, the second, yeah. and the second one is the, how we're going to resist the sins is like put the God as a priority in your life. Like put him in the right place in your life. and you have to build a fence, like when you want to build a fence around your house to protect, like the, how do you call it? But when you put a fence by praying, by devoting to God, that's how you're going to resist the, the temptation and devil. And for the lights of lights, even we say it in, uh, we believe in one God. He is the light of the light and true God of true God. So it's really Jesus is the light of the world. So he is the light. Thank you, Sayyidina. Thank you, Mary. Another uh, comment or uh, if you want to add something or you want to ask me any question. You so know, I'm... conversation, let me, let me state this. Conversation will enrich all of us. Even though I might not answer you, I might not know the, the, the answer, but Somebody else will see Mary now. She gave us a nice picture about God and, and our, our earthly fathers. They will allow us to do something to, to make us stronger, but they won't, won't allow us to fall. Thank you, Mary. Before I ask more questions from others, I think, um, go ahead, Omida, if you want to add something. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, actually, um, I want to add a point of view. Um, when I was in Syria, I was in really the hard time of uh, being there. Uh, it was the harsh years of the war. But I have noticed like things in my relationship to God. Um, I'm, I'm clear in my voice or? No, yes, 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 we are hearing you. Yeah. So um, I ask God, why you take away my father during this year and I couldn't see him? And why my sister get a, a piece of bomb in her shoulder? Why you are doing all that? Um, the, question, the question was um, kind of unbelieving in, in Jesus anymore. But um, Jesus was working in a very nice way. And then I got my answer. My answer was that there is a temptation and there is a devil. The devil is exist. It's not because I want him to be exist, but he is exist. Now it's your turn to understand how to be with Jesus going through this temptation. If you are not with me, you can't hold this time with joy because the cross is like our temptation. You have been in cross. You were on the cross with me when you were passing all this. But I was hold my cross with joy because there is a salvation at the end. So I understand that the people who lose their faith, they lose the hand of Jesus through the temptation. But the people who stay faithful, they pass the temptation peacefully with Jesus. This is one thing. The other point of view is about the fasting. The fasting, actually, I um, like strongly face the, the, the Lenting and fasting after my marriage. I have been married like eight months now. After this, um, as the Sayyidina mentioned, he said that our relationship is holy and sacrament. And I was asking many times, Lord, there is the, the fasting of Christmas and there is the fasting of the resurrection and I have to fast for many desires. How can I do that? And every time I feel in temptation that if I 
follow my desires, even if it's holy. And then when I really try with my husband, I really feel with the strong of God that if you can control the strongest desire, you can fight any temptation in your life. Because if we can control the thing that lead us to do anything else, many sins, thoughts, that means we can fight the temptation. After that, I say, thank you, Lord, that you gave us the strength to go through the, 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 the most difficult thing in our life. You are in a holy relationship, but you can do this because you are in a holy time. So this gives me strength. So fasting and the prayer are really strong. And when I fast on this, I could pray more. So that, that's my point of view that I really like to share it with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so another question we had. Um, so when it was said that Adam and Jesus live in our hearts, was that meant as a metaphor? Um, the person is asking. Of course. of course, of course, because because as believers and uh, as baptized uh, ones, we have to have only Jesus Christ. But when I when I said we have Adam and we have Christ, I'm I'm, I'm talking about temptations, as as. Uh, Omida just mentioned we have always temptation. If if we if we trust God and and we get, we give Him uh, to lead our life, we'll overcome it and He will open. It was a metaphor. Of course, uh, we are baptized. We are believers, and and only Jesus Christ has has the lead uh, in our life. But um, I was telling you, Adam is here because we are tempted. If we let him uh, emerge again, he will he will take the lead, and we will uh, will go astray and will 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 face a spiritual death. Does it mean fruit of the spirit when it says first fruit? So verse eighteen. 18 uh, yeah. uh, some commentators they say that we are the church and will be the new creation. Then we then, then we are going. Because we believe in him will be the new creation and he, because because he doesn't want us to to uh, to die so he incarnated and he paid the price of our uh, sin and by paying the price of our sin and when we when we and when he he died on the cross he died you know there is a, a nice imagery image here because he he the, the cross has an horizontal and vertical, horizontal and vertical uh, aspects. The vertical aspect is linking us or reconciling us with God. And the vertical one is reconciling everybody, but we have to accept him. Yes, he, he came for all of us, but if we don't accept him, nothing will be done. So when we accept him, he will, he will abide in us. But again, because of our fallen nature, we have to feed, we have to feed our our new uh, nature uh, with the word of God, with fasting, with prayer to overcome all sort of temptation. If we are going to be lazy, uh, Jesus Christ uh, saved me. I don't have any problem. <laughs> will believe me? Will will fall? Will 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 end up by by being dead? Spiritually. Um, Mina has a question. Go ahead, Mina. Barak more Sayyidna. Hello, Barak Mina. Sayyidna, I have a question. Uh, with you Mina from Florida. I know you. Mina John, yes. So, Sayyidna, I have a question when it comes, and again, it's related to temptation. Um, finding the right balance between, like, when we fall, we become humble, and we, we realize that we're not strong and we need God, but also to to keep our confidence that we can fight it and that we do have the power in God? How do you find the balance between the confidence and the humility? I really don't have the right answer right now, but I think, I think we have to have both. We have to have both here. Mm -hmm. And I need, because you know, this is a spiritual, and you are asking about a spiritual uh, uh, experience and everyone has his own, uh, uh, spiritual experience. I think we need both. We need to be completely humble. If not, we are going to 
to to die spiritually and we have to have complete confidence in God because with him we will be able to overcome all sort of temptation I pass yeah you pass thank you um, and then the last one we have here um, what is the last one I have no, nothing we, can ask more. we can have more and the one the last one they're asking us <laughs> um, if you could please expand on the practicality of submitting to God so like how maybe some tips I think they're asking as I told you as I told you any uh, submitting to God it's it's to 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 depend on him completely depend on him completely any whatever we do especially if we are working uh, uh, with him if somebody will tell us uh, uh, thank you you are doing a great job not me it's him working through me uh, again, you know, to refer everything to him, I'm nothing. He's, you know, this is humbleness in uh, whatever I do. It's him who is strengthening me. Whatever I want to do, I will, I will do it for his glory. Uh, you, you know, and he, I don't know if uh, Omida, Omida mentioned something very important. Have him as number one in my life. If I do everything. Uh, with a consideration that God comes first in my life, this is a total submission to him. This is a total submission to him. I cannot move, I cannot do, I cannot read, I cannot, it's him. And, and let me, let me uh, try to uh, give you another uh, example. It's an earthly one. Yani when somebody, I keep repeating this example, when somebody is uh, in love with uh, somebody else, hopefully from the other uh, uh, sex, because now we have this problem. So uh, you will see her or his face everywhere, everywhere. When you read your book, when you pray, when you see his or her face ev always, and this has to be the same with God. We, we, we are in love with him. And when there is a love relationship with, between me and my Lord, I see him everywhere, everywhere. And this is a total submission to God. But again, again, this is, this, is, you know, this is not a theological question. It's a, a spiritual question. I'm sure many of you can add to it because it reflects your relationship with God. And I would love to hear other voices. Please, you will, you will reach us. Yes, I was going to say, if anyone has any questions or things to add, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll, I, uh, Baruch Mor Sayyidna, um, I have a question. Okay, so um, I want to go back to what you said, like, when you're being led to the table and, and, you, and then you say, no, I can't do that. I don't know what's right and uh, what's wrong. Like, I'm not hearing you, Frank. I'm not hearing you. Can you repeat? Frank, you? How about you? Can you um, text it? Because your your internet's a little oh. bit off. Oh, can you guys hear me now? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, so, you know how you were saying uh, uh, when you're being led to temptation, you say, uh, uh, and hold on. When you're being led to temptation, uh, you say, oh, no, I'm not going to do that because that isn't a good thing. Like, I know what's the right thing and all. When you're, uh, and once you keep saying that, and then after that, it becomes like a, a struggle, like it becomes a strength, like it's forcing you to do that, to being led to temptation. What is the best thing to do for us to avoid that, uh, that, uh, for, that power, that force? for us to not be led to something. You have to repeat the opposite. I can't do it by his help. Can you say you that one more time, please? You have to, 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 to do the, the opposite completely. Yeah, instead to say, I cannot do it, the, the devil will overcome me. You have to say, with God, I can do everything and he will help me and I will overcome any sort of temptation. And by the way, by the way, we have something positive here because when you know when you know the wrong from the right, that means you know God and you are in the right track. You have, you have to train yourself and you have to keep repeating. Even, you know, the prayer of Jesus, 
it's few words, but it will it will strengthen you. Jesus Christ, my Savior, help me. I don't know if I I said the exact uh, wording here, but by repeating His name always, you will be really strong, and you you will you will overcome everything. Dev the devil cannot cannot approach you if you depend or you of or if you submit your life to God. Thank you. But Thank you have to submit your life to God completely, not only uh, uh, by 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 saying that. Mm -hmm. You have to mean it. And I cannot examine your heart. He himself, the Lord, can examine your your heart. All right. Thank you. And also, like, thank you for for everything that you said uh, today in the Bible study. Like, it changed my life. Thank you so much. God bless you, my friend. Anthony, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I have a follow-up on what he said. Anthony, from Detroit. Hi, Bahmar. Hello, Mbarek, Habibi. Yes. Um, I, I have a follow-up on what he said. Um, who, one, who one he speech, said, me or uh, Frank? Uh, Frank, I yes. guess. Go ahead. Yeah, it was me. Thank you. Yeah. I have a follow-up follow -up on what he said. Um for how we how we can you know like resist temptation um like how i don't know how to put it in words but when um when, when we're being tempted by the devil um what if it's like too strong in a way can we go to church and like like you know i don't i don't really know how to put it like in words but can we go to, like I think with like women I think what he's trying to say is, I think what he's trying to say is, is that when we're being uh, being led to temptation, sh should we go to church, uh, like, uh, for us to not be in temptation? Is that what you meant? Yeah. Or to confess, maybe. Yeah. Anthony, how old are you? Uh, I'm 11. God bless you, my friend. Stay, you. stay like you are right now and you will overcome all sort of temptation be always in church you. and you are blessed because you are you are in a faithful family and this is important this is important the family it's our first church and if we live in a fa like all of our families we are nourished with everything from from our our home. So God bless you, my friend Anthony. Thank you. Love you. Unless we don't have any other one. Who would pray for us? Not me. I'm tired. <laughs> Even though I cannot be tired from praying, but uh, I need somebody else. I, I have a hear question. Your voice. I have and a question uh, before the prayer. Yes. Uh, Sayedna uh, Fikri. Fikri. When uh, do I? I mean, it's very great explanation. This is my answer maybe to many young people. When you tempted, just stop yourself and your mind for one, three seconds or five seconds. Think about God or devil. Then your conscious will, will push you. If you are a believer, will conscious push you to stop the devil things or the bad thinking or to be tempted and you will choose God's way and that you will stop wherever you was going to do something bad. Just to think only for three to five seconds. And then you, you could judge it. Taudi Sayyidna. Thank you. Taudi Fikri. God bless you. So, somebody. Can I pray Sayyidna? Yes. Omida. Shema abu wabro ruha. Abu wabro ruha yo qadish wa hadalu. Shariru ameen. Thank you, Lord, for today. Um, I didn't know about it, but I will thank Lilian Khoury, who let me know this um, amazing group. Thank you, Lord, to let us know the uh, small scenes that we even didn't think it's a sin. Thank you, Lord, to show us how much we are sinners and how much you are close to sinner. Please, Lord, help us to give you our life. Help us to give you completely our life. There is many times, Lord, we are weak, we can't give you everything, but show us how much amazing is your company, how much amazing leadership you have. Thank you, Lord, to give us people to let us know how much amazing you are, like the bishop, like the fathers who serve the altar. Lord, don't prevent us 
to take you in the Holy Sacrament. Please, Lord, let the days be short. Shorten the days so can calm the church and share with you your body and your blood. Amen. 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 Tomorrow we have something. Hey, you know what we have tomorrow? Uh, we have a buena Saliba will be talking with us about this. Uh -huh, good, yes. good, good, good. On Saturday at uh, 12 p.m. If you'd like to to follow a medical lecture, I will send it to. Uh, I will send it to Tanya, she can, and to Nahreen, they can send it to all of you. Uh, it's on, uh, it's on uh, Zoom uh, app, and we have five uh, physicians from our, uh, our church. They will be talking about uh, coronavirus. Uh, I will send it to, to Nahreen and to uh, Tanya. They will send it to you if you are interested.